Hi everyone, welcome to this special webinar talking about Feng Shui secrets in period 9. If you enjoy watching this video and other videos of mine, yeah, do subscribe at the button right below here and remember to click the bell notification to get notified every time there's a new video uploads. All right, enjoy the webinar now. All right, okay. So uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you to all of you here today uh, to, uh, to attend this uh, very special webinar talking about Feng Shui. Okay, first of all, uh, I would like to actually uh, say, uh, uh, I would like to express my deepest gratitude because all of you here come from different parts of the world. Some of you are <laughs> wake up very early in the morning and some of you stay on very late at night, right? So no matter where you are, all right, so thank you for here. And I will share with you today um, about uh, a very interesting topic about Feng Shui, right? So, and I've been told that all of you here come uh, have different background and different understanding about Feng Shui. Some of you here are very new, yeah, very new to Feng Shui. Probably this is the first time, or you maybe you don't even know what Feng Shui is. And some of you here are an expert in Feng Shui or seasoned practitioner in Feng Shui. So if you are a beginner, Right, or you're very new to Feng Shui, yeah, type the word zero in the chat box. And if you're expert, you're not no longer beginner, you're expert or intermediate, type the word one. All right, so there are no 0 0.5, so either zero or one. Okay, cool. So we have a mixture group of our attendees here today. I saw an 18. Okay, wow, this is a, a master of the master level. I saw one of you just now typing here. Wow, there are so many of you here. I can't even keep track. Okay, but I see there's a mixture here, which is very good. Yeah, so today, uh, just to share with you, I'm not going to share about uh, something very technical. So if you are new to Feng Shui, I hope that you don't feel that you are, you mean you're out of place here. No worry, right? So I will go, we'll go through more on the practical side of it and see how can you use Feng Shui uh, to help us prepare, not only for now, yeah, but for the future. Right, so because uh, some of you probably learn about Pazer Feng Shui, Chimun Dunja, they will become to a point yeah, that you need to decide, you know, hey, what are you going to do with those information? Do you guys agree? Right, so yes, learning has its place, but they also come to a point that we need to have a plan, right, a strategy to become better. Otherwise, we keep feeling good, like we know a lot of stuff, but in the end, getting nowhere. Right, we don't want to go through that. Uh, part of it, we want to tell ourselves, I mean, consciously, you know, hey, you know, okay, this is a point, we need to do something about it, right? So, and um, I hope that today would be the point, right? That where you're able to decide, you know, yes, I'm still going to learn, I mean, uh, perpetually, but I need to do something for myself because I've been spent some time doing this and I, I hope that today I'll be the guide for you. Yeah, I'm a coach. So some of you here are very new uh, to this. Probably this is the first time you're joining this kind of setup, this kind of webinar. Uh, let me just give you some introduction about who am I here. My name is Iverson Lee. I'm a consultant and uh, instructor and speaker from Joey Up Consulting Group. So occasionally, I, and I, I did a lot of webinars, something like this, uh, because on my day job, if someone you say, hey, Iverson, what are you doing on your day job? Basically, I'm doing two things. Uh, the first part here, I do a lot of consultations. So I meet uh, my clients one to one, and then we uh, actually discuss about their prob uh, their problems, and then uh, we try to figure out the solution. Yeah, what the best solution to help them to achieve their goal or resolve certain problems using Chinese metaphysics. All right. So some of you are very new here. Chinese metaphysics are a system uh, that uh, that com there's a combination of astrology, feng shui, and uh, I would say energy related study that help us to resolve certain problem and also attract opportunities for us to become, uh, to achieve what we want, right? That is the Chinese metaphysics umbrella. There are so many, Pazi, feng shui, there are so many of it. So, and then the second part here, besides doing consultation, I'm also a teacher. So I, because some of, uh, I noticed that some group that they like to learn the art themselves. So they're, they're able to practice it over and over again and apply over and over again, right? To get uh, 10x of the results. So I believe that the reason you are attending here is it's not because you like Feng Shui. Yeah, it's not because you like Pazi or Chimun Dunja. Yeah, the reason all of us here, I believe 99% of us learning Pazi, Feng Shui or Chimun because we 
hope that by gaining all this knowledge, we're able to do something to improve our life for better. Isn't it true? Right? That is the end result, right? So let's not get deviated from it because I don't think you fall in love with the North, South, East, West character. Oh, I love the Compass or Lopan, right? So <laughs> that one is a part of the process. Okay? And then the, the thing here, in the end, I don't care how interesting it is, but in the end, you don't get what you want. You're still where you are five years before, then yeah, somewhere, somehow, you, you get it wrong. Agree? Right, so it's a responsibility we should tell ourselves, hey, since we're going to spend some time doing this, we better make sure we get some results here. So I, the way I see myself in this, uh, I, in this, part, uh, this part of setup here, uh, hopefully I be someone, or it could be a friend, it could be a coach that encourage you, push you a little bit, you know, further, so you can take some action. Yeah, so whenever you, I see certain results you got, actually, uh, you get eventually, I feel happy. Right, because I somehow in a way that I feel that I make a difference. Yeah, sometimes it's not just teaching you how to do it. Sometimes, I mean, all of us here sometimes require a little bit of push. Agree? Right. We know a lot of stuff sometimes we say, hey, you know, whether it's the right thing to do or not. Right. So, and hopefully I can help, help you to make that uh, move today. And, and some of you are new here. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm not forgetting you. If you're new here, you don't know what it is all about. Today, I'm going to share with you how do you actually get prepared yeah, for, the, for the new era, for the new world, if you will, right? So I think that this part of um, uh, the pandemic uh, era, the starting since uh, the mid of 2020, yeah, this part here actually is, uh, uh, it actually changed uh, how we see the world. Don't you agree, right? It's changed our paradigm, the way we see health, the way we work, the way how business work and, and the, on a bigger scale, how the economy work. Right, so and and us as a Chinese metaphysics practitioner, because we actually uh, uh, consulted a lot of business people, yeah? not only professionals. We, so therefore, we actually give them a plan, right? Not just what to do today, but a long term plan. Yeah, how do they actually keep uh, thriving and excelling despite of all this fluctuation and all this uncertainty in the world right now, right? So I hope that in the end, uh, Chinese metaphysics. I think a lot of people thinking this is just about money. Right, it's about actually becoming rich. Actually, it's not. Right, you think about this. Right, yeah, I, I used to think that way as well. It's about making money, but it, uh, throughout this process, I discovered that the most yeah expensive thing in the world, yeah, uh, in the world is not about. Uh, it's something that money can cannot buy. Yeah, you can buy it. Yeah, so what it is, is the peace of mind. Don't you guys agree? Right, I don't care what you had on the external world. Yeah, if internally you're not peaceful, all this thing is worthless, right? So therefore, uh, one of the important system or a very uh, right system yeah, to help us to achieve that part, right, is, is uh, feng shui. Yeah, feng shui is one of the system able to help to do that because if you have inner peace, right, your pleasant inside, pleasant things will happen to you, agree? Yeah, if everything internally your struggle, yeah, you jealous this, you know, and then you can you, you feel that you are always get a shorter uh, stick, you know, and then and also maybe you feel that everyone conspired, yeah, uh, to actually give you a hard time, you know, so you're not going to be pleasant, right? So you're going to be happy, and therefore you weren't able to attract uh, good things in your life. Yeah, so think about this, right? If you, how about you, right? Do you see yourself as a pleasant person? You're easygoing. Right, things are okay. It's fine. It doesn't mean you have you are a billionaire. It doesn't matter whether you're a multi millionaire. Even you are not. Right, you still feel happy. You still can enjoy life. Don't you think this is a, a life that we want? Yeah, the life that we do something that make us feel fulfilled. Yeah. So this is what I discovered along the way. Right, because I since I started this in two thousand thirteen, I used to think it's all about wealth. <laughs> Yeah, because that time, uh, let me share with you. Uh, during that time, I'm I'm struggling financially, and then and the worst part here is I don't like what I I do. That time, I'm a uh, programmer, so therefore, and and I hate to go to work. Yeah, so my favorite day is Friday, and the day I hate the most is Monday. How many of you here have the same feeling? Right, <laughs> if you have the same feeling. Yeah, so which means that you know something need to change, right? So that time, you know, yeah, during Friday time, I uh, yes, I'm so psyched, you know, yeah, ready to go, you know, so and enjoy my life, right? And then at the um, normally it's not even Monday, you know, it's on roughly around Sunday evening, 
yeah, that's the time where the moods, the moods kicks in. <laughs> then I become emotional, right? Emo, right? Uh, that's that's when the the transition happened, right? So that time, uh, th this is back in two thousand thirteen. So that's where I decided to make the shift, and then the trigger point, right? Although that time I'm not happy with my job, and then I'm struggling financially, but I still, you know, hang in there. You know, I don't know what. I, why you know because maybe a fear of taking a decision until uh, one incident yeah that actually uh, triggered me yeah, to to make a new decision is when my parents told me that they are going to retire right so they're going to retire and then uh, this is actually I, I i don't i feel that i have pressure uh, actually because if i'm struggling financially and my parents are going to retire soon so what do you think right so i need to support them right as a as a son so therefore that i say I, hey i was i cannot do this anymore right so i cannot just stay here i need to actually do something about my life right the credit the creditor are calling you know so many things happening yeah long story short that's uh, when I actually discovered this uh, art of Chinese metaphysics which I'm going to share with you right because uh, the my life start to change uh, I mean the starting point here is when I understand yeah how Chinese metaphysics works and more importantly how I using it right I, I noticed that a lot of time people know the concept they know uh, the so-called uh, the paradigm of it right but they don't know really how to use it so it take, it took me some time and then I discovered I saw when I applied I saw results and then when I see I, I able to actually create results for myself and then that's when I start to pursue this path to share with everyone else so the first information yeah that I uh, actually came across yeah that helped me to see right what is how the universe work and how results are created is when i get to know this piece of information which i'm going to share with you right now is what i call the cosmic trinity so some of you here might heard about this or see this diagram before yeah but uh, some of you are right new don't know what i'm talking about so let me share with you right now on the screen yeah this is the first piece of information that changed my life okay so this is the one do you see on the screen right now? Right. So this is what I uh, what I address as uh, the the cosmic trinity. So let me explain to you a little bit uh, what this is all about. the co The cosmic trinity is uh, the way, right? How the Chinese metaphysics uh, interpret the the working of the universe, right? So which means that if you are able to master, yeah, these three domains here you able to create results and master your destiny okay so these are the three things so let me just briefly explain to you uh, how this how it is and also how does it apply to our life here so now the first one here if you look at the top here this one would be the heaven right as the word heaven imply this one represents something uh, you cannot change is already given right so it's like the moment you're born right so you cannot change who is your biology uh, parent is or not right so there are something that already fixed that given to you the moment you're born some of you here you're born um, uh, in a silver spoon family your family is rich right some of you born in a in a maybe in a war zone country right not so pleasant right so that part we cannot choose right so it's something just given to us and some of you uh, you're born in such a way no matter uh, what you eat uh, you still cannot uh, gain weight how many of you here like that you can you can and then uh, you can eat supper you can eat whatever you want yeah but in the end you know nothing happened to you you still have a very fit body okay this is a dream of everyone right now right so therefore some some people are like that right like one of my friend yeah uh, she can eat everything yeah, every, everything that's moved and then got face she ate all right that's how i mean uh, so basically she she eats everything yeah and the thing here is uh, no matter what she eat even supper yeah she she still able to maintain the fit body right so i then that time i say hey yeah she must do a lot of exercise or do a lot of training but actually later on discover she don't do any single thing any exercise at all right so some people are just like this right so therefore we're talking about uh this part is about heaven because it's gifted Right, it's like uh, some some of uh, you might knew someone yeah that have a very nice uh, skin complexion, right? And then and the thing here is they only use the soap to wash their face. That's all. 
Right, so and then where else? A lot of people they use the toner, they use the moisturizer, they buy all the expensive brand, right? And then the other person here, they have a uh, one of uh, a very beautiful skin complexion, but the only thing this person use is a soap, right? And then it's not even the the one that only for the face, you know. You use to wash the whole body, the kind of soap, the body soap, and then therefore this part you cannot explain is part of given to us, right? So I think that a lot of people say we can control everything in life. I don't agree with that because part of it is given. Do you guys agree? Yeah, just like uh, if you want to, if you are not, uh, you don't have the talent in singing, right? I don't care whether you practice 24-7, you cannot out-sing Whitney Houston, right? Because it's something is given. So therefore, the heaven part is when we study Pazza, right? We study Pazza, we study that part. How many of you here learned Pazza before? Your destiny chart, right? That part is telling you what is given to you. Right, is uh is uh, given to you. So the more we know it, we know how to use it. Right. So let's say you don't like your parser. Can you just plot the chart again and hopefully the thing will change? No, the ch the, the chart is still there, right? Yeah. So the, the, the goal here is not about to discriminate your parser, but to make the best use of it. Okay. All right. So that's a let me just uh explain to you this part here. Let me share you back this, share back the screen. Okay, so this is the one, right? So let me give you a more perspective here between this heaven, earth, and man, this three cosmic trinity. So if I add in this piece of information inside, right? So do you see this piece of information? Now you know, right? How do we actually, uh, how does this three cosmic trinity apply in our learning, our Chinese metaphysics learning, right? So just now we're talking about heaven. Is what given to us. If you want to know our talent, therefore we learn about parts of astrology, right? So, but what if the moment you are born, there are something that you feel that you want to do, but your parts of chart doesn't have those conducive ingredient or required ingredient to do it. So, what you should do? Then in the cosmic trinity, there is another part here called the earth element, where the moment you're already born. Right, you can actually do something, yeah, that change a uh, certain configuration you have. Okay, so this part here is something got to do with the earth aspect, which is the feng shui. So you can see, you can actually uh, see the pata, the pata astrology, uh, as a um, hold on, uh, this one. Okay, the pata astrology as the uh, what do I mean? Uh, let me see. The Pazza astrology is a diagnosis. So we're talking about uh, diagnosis, you know, so you can actually uh, diagnose the problem. Then the Feng Shui is about prescription, yeah, where you can actually use Feng Shui to uh, improve certain part of your life or create new opportunities that you are not supposed to have in your chart or in your destiny. Would it be cool? Right? So yes, the yeah, Pazza is the part that actually tell you what you have. Yeah, but feng shui is the part that able to, uh, I would say, tweak the equation. So if you have a choice, you only can learn one thing here. Which part do you think you like to learn? Pazzi or, or feng shui? Okay, but I'll say both, right? Yeah, so because if you don't know the diagnosis, you don't know what to change. Agree? Right, just like you go, like go to a doctor, right? You need to do the blood checkup first. Right, so you know where which part got issues and got problems, and then only you know what to do with it. So therefore, the whole chart, uh, the this is what I use, right? So a lot of people uh, ask me, you know, what you do to change uh, 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 my life around or to turn my life around is I'm using these two simple tools, right? Pazza and astrology, and uh, but the interesting thing is like this: if you look at here, what is the third components? In this uh, diagram here, there is a, a man, right? So do you see uh, the, the man diagram? So the man here, so the man represents free will. Yeah, let me ask you one question here. Even you know everything about your partner, you know what kind of feng shui application you can apply, but can you choose to ignore it and do nothing? Right? Some people are like that, right? They say it's too difficult, right? I better... I better not do anything. I go with the flow. Have you met someone like this? 
right? The, the free will part, right? Even though you know, have you met someone that know everything about Pazza? They know everything about Feng Shui. They know, they know what to do, how to apply, when to apply, or even how to apply it. Yeah, but they do nothing. They say it's too hard. Maybe tomorrow, right? There are people like this. So therefore, the third part is, I would say, is the most important. Right? You think about this, right? Even you don't know Pazza and you don't know Feng Shui, if you, your, the person become more disciplined and more hardworking, don't you think your life automatically will become better? Right. Yeah, let's say, yeah, I know that I practice Feng Shui, I practice Pazza. Let's, let's put that aside, right? So I don't want to be biased here. Let's say you don't know anything about Pazza and Feng Shui at all. But you you just in, improve yourself 1% daily. Would your life improve or not? Yes. Okay, another scenario here. Let's say now you are given the privilege to learn Pazza and Feng Shui. You know exactly how to 10x your life. But you can choose not to do anything with it, right? So don't you think among these three components, the man component also very important? Right? It's, it's the, I would say the most important, you know, is the free will part. Right, so this is what uh, we dictate, you know, your, the end of your, uh, uh, what is the outcome yeah, of everything given to you is how using it. So a lot of time, yeah, when I actually share with you a lot of information, I also share with you about the man aspect as well, right? Because the man governs your mindset, also govern your courage or your discipline. Uh, this Remember I told you just now about someone is pleasant internally or not, right? That one is a man. Yeah, if you're someone pleasant internally, whatever you learn, you will apply. Right? So, and if you're someone that, you know, always piss off with everyone, you know, even the lizard, you also piss off, you know. So, therefore, it's very hard for you to actually make improvement. So, when we actually look at the chart, if let's say you discover that, hey, I, dis I learned Pazza today and I learned Feng Shui, you know, I want you to remind yourself, is your choice to do it or not? Right, so this is very important. That's why from the earlier, I hope that I can be someone that push you one step ahead. Yeah, because I've been told some of you learn a lot of things already, right? So, and, and, and then yet another group of people will say, hey, yeah, I go with the flow, right? I don't want to force too much, right? So I just go with the flow, where the flow goes, and then I'll follow. Okay, let me tell you, those people who say goes with the flow, yeah, 90% of them are lazy people, okay? Yeah, I'm not discriminating them. Yeah, let me tell you why. 90% of the people don't even qualify to, to tell everyone that they follow the flow. Why? Because they don't even do their best. Who is qualified to say the word go with the flow? It's when you do your very best on anything you set to achieve. Do you guys agree with this? Right? If you want to score an exam with flying colors, you study every single day, you, you, you actually uh, do a st uh, group study, you get the best teacher, you do every single thing. Then on the exam day, you also do your best. Then while waiting the result, yes, you can say the word go with the flow because you do every best. Uh, let the universe decide. Yeah, but a lot of people misuse this. They do nothing about it. And then for them to feel better, yeah, that's a def defense mechanism. Then they say, okay, go with the flow. So it seems like they abdicate their responsibility. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I say only mine. There only a small portion of people that can quali can qualify to say that I go with the flow because they do their very best. Okay, so I hope that this message here can remind you. If any of your friend may tell the word, go with the flow, go with the flow, and most of them are based on my experience. Yeah, they are not even do their best. Yeah, they're just freaking lazy. Okay, so therefore the man free will is very important. So once you're able to master yeah, this triangle or this cosmic trinity, yeah, you can start the path of transforming your destiny. So now, uh, once you understand this, uh, the, the only thing here is the feng shui part, right? The feng shui part here is everyone has a different definition of feng shui. Right, so let's say uh, because today we're going to talk about feng shui because some of the class I talk about parts right to understand yourself, but today we're talk about feng shui. Uh, why I want to stress this uh, again because all of us have different definition about uh, feng shui. So I want to clarify with all of you here. Uh, uh, what is this feng shui is all about? So let me give you one metaphor here. If you want to become successful, right, and then you have two groups of friends, group A. Yeah, group A, this uh, group, your group of friends, they are very successful and they're very positive person. 
all right group a and then there's another group is group b uh this group of friends they are not successful because they're lazy and then they are very they are very negative so every weekend they'll gather together and then they cry together okay yeah misery loves company right there's a saying yeah so they like their hobby is crying yeah they group to, together and then they keep telling each other how bad their life is so let's say now if you want to actually able to select right this uh this group here which part that you you think that can help you to get to the next level group a or group b okay all right nice okay yeah now very good i think this is uh the most uh <laughs> obvious uh question uh answer is a right okay nice okay i see a lot of a's here okay good so now why they are not even you you know it's your group of friends why you think that group a people will able to help you to become more successful yeah I, i'm not saying you're wrong right so i'm just telling you why okay good energy feel positive and hopeful influence yes you're correct the reason you choose a because in your life you experienced before when you have a group there's a that the group can influence you because the environment always will overpower us agree right if you mix with a group of uh i would say successful people somehow their energy their vibes their positive vibes will actually uh infect us right so therefore become more positive all right yeah so don't you think that the environment always overpower us right if you want to change your life yeah you change your environment right you change your friend right because uh so the question here is are you mixing with the right groups of friends right now yeah that's the first thing so feng shui yeah why i'm going to tell this here because feng shui principles is the same right so feng shui is like this um the where where you position yourself in uh in a certain area you determine your destiny because if you position yourself in an area with positive energy you have a very different effects if you position yourself in the bad energy area yeah feng shui is the same metaphor instead of friends they are talking about energy so you think about this yeah in your house let's say there are two office room for you to work office uh, there's a room a and room b and you discovered after using feng shui to calculate room a has the uh uh very positive energy and room b have uh negative energy of course you're going to choose room a right that is feng shui yeah just that simple okay yeah so in a nutshell feng shui is about uh positioning yeah the thing here is the only problem that all of us here have is we don't know where is good or bad energy right there's no feng shui glass the moment you wear you can automatically see where is good energy and where is bad energy isn't it right they don't have one no so therefore the reason someone learn feng shui is because they want to learn the formula because the formula after you actually apply the formula you can calculate uh there's uh the information that will tell you which room contains good or bad energy that's it right in the end once you know it and then you just position yourself to that room that is you already using feng shui yeah so because some of you are very new you might have different uh uh so called uh perception about feng shui what i just did tell you just now is feng shui is it hard no it's not hard right so if you infuse yourself with positive energy right you will become someone positive you're healthier of course you're you're pleasant and then you're able to attract because of that you're able to attract uh, good outcomes in your life and opportunities and if you are in a bad feng shui area then you uh, then you because you infuse with bad energy right then you think negatively you know and because of that you maybe you don't have the courage to do something because you're too negative and in long run yeah if you exposed to those energy long enough then then somehow you reflect in your life right in your destiny therefore we say it's a bad destiny already so therefore sometime when i see someone chart is their partner chart is so good right but how come they cannot actually perform their best uh, sometime the feng shui actually suppressing them yeah the moment we tweak the feng shui you know just sometimes just merely of changing room then that's it right suddenly you know yeah the 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 energy is back and then they just move forward yeah so and then achieve the success that they want yeah so feng shui is about that so the first question 
I would like you to think about is your current house, uh, I would say is an asset or a liability. You are not from a uh, financial point of view. You are from feng shui point of view. Okay, right? So if it's an asset, the house feng shui is supposed to what? To enhance and support you. If it's a liability, then the house feng shui, the energy is suppressing you. Yeah, despite you have a great destiny, it's sort of like keep there's a capping there. You cannot just uh, push it through, right? So this is the, the, the power of this uh, feng shui here. So now, once you know this piece of information, do you realize that actually feng shui yeah, is something that are uh, very important? Yes, right. So because if you somehow uh, change your destiny, that's why you see that one thing. Yeah, this is, one, uh, uh, this is what I realized. Rich people use feng shui, poor people don't. Do you realize that? Yeah, do you realize that a lot of rich people they're using feng shui? And tell me this, is rich people, they are dumb. They are not dumb, definitely, right? So there must be something working, right? Otherwise, they, do, they don't use it. So today, I'm going to actually, uh, why I want to tell this from the start is because some of you are right new here, right? You might think feng shui is about putting item, right? Maybe there's a Mandarin duck. Yeah, there's a figurine, maybe it's a dinosaur or T-Rex or anything, a, a, a toys they put there and then hopefully the thing will change. That one is not feng shui. All right, that one is called interior design. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, so don't mistaken feng shui, interior design, right? Interior design, you can like to put anything. You can hang a, a painting on the wall, can put a vase there, whatever, up to you, okay? And again, that one is not feng shui. Yeah, feng shui, it's just about positioning. Yeah, maybe you have to write this down. Yeah, feng shui is, is about the art of positioning. When you position correctly, yeah, yeah, then you're unstoppable, right? But if you position uh, poorly, yeah, then hurdles will come. So this is about feng shui. That's it, right? So this is the introduction. Hope do you understand better now in terms of feng shui? Some of you are very new here. Right, is it bad? Uh, okay, cool, right? So now this is very important. Otherwise, uh, you might be taken advantage by a lot of so-called uh, marketeer and then they tell you, you want to wear this, wear that, and then you, then you need to pay like thousands of uh, uh, money, you know, to pay that, right? Don't do that, right? Why? Right, some people say what color to wear, right? That, that one is fashion design, right? That one is not, in, that one is not feng shui. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I'm, don't, don't take my word for it. Yeah, you think about, this, yeah, try to reflect back all the successful people. If that, of course, a lot of people interview them, right? Then they ask them, hey, how, how come you're so successful? They interview Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk. Did anyone of them tell you that it's because 10 years ago, I wear a certain color, uh, a certain colors, or maybe I put a toys or something figuring in my room, therefore they become successful? Did they tell you anything that resembles that? Yeah, not even remotely, right? So therefore, right, it's nothing to do with putting items there, right? So it's about uh, the energy. Are you in the right energy room or not? Okay. All right. So now, once you know this, uh, are you truly understand? Because I want to add one more layer to it, right? Well, I want to add one more layer. Are you guys okay? Now you understand feng shui, right? But you, if you pay attention today, we're going to talk about feng shui secrets in period nine. I just addressed the feng shui part. Now I want to add in the period nine component inside. Okay. Some of you new here say, oh, a lot, everyone talking about period nine. What it is, what it is all about. What is this bus all about? And um, period nine, yeah, period nine is, uh, let me show you the diagram first. Yeah, just now I, I show you, I accidentally show you just now. Yeah, but now is the right time to show you this. Okay, so the, I, this graphic here, uh, illustrate perfectly, you know, that uh, what is period nine is about. So, which means that the whole world, don't worry, it's not going to explode, all right? So, <laughs> the whole world will go through uh, a so called a uh, huge energy shift every 20 years. Yeah, every 20 years, they'll go through a huge uh, energy shift. And uh, we call this a uh, uh, period. So, as we are talking right now, we are in period eight. And not so long after from now, we will go into period nine, okay, for another 20 years. So every time, yeah, every time the period shift, 
a lot of people worry, right? So uh, don't worry. Uh, let me tell you uh, what is this period now is about. Every time the energy shift, it will affect the cosmic trinity. All right. So remember just now the 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 cosmic trinity. There are three parts: heaven, earth, and man. Right. So which means that the what is the heaven represent again? Tell me your astrology chart. Right. So which means that the chart will have different interaction. So maybe last time, yeah, uh, you feel that your chart is a bad chart, right? You feel that you cannot see opportunities, right? And then you feel that you're negative. Maybe in period nine, the energy shift happening, yeah, it will interact with your chart differently. Okay. So, so don't you think this is an opportunity for you to become better? Of course, right? So you know this this shift doesn't happen every year, you know. That's why it's so important. It only happens once every 20 years. If you miss this, then you need to wait for what? Another 20 years. Okay. So and now it's not only affecting the heaven part, it will also affect the feng shui part. Right. So which means that, you know, whatever feng shui, right, that you are doing right now, it will be very different. Yeah. In period nine, because it's like this. Uh, good feng shui doesn't last forever. They are so to bad feng shui. So it's our job right right now to see whether the house we're living in yeah, can be period nine compliant or not, right? This is our main focus of today, okay? Right, so and uh, let me show you this part first. Right? If you want to understand period nine, yeah, so this is the one I want to share with you first. Yeah, this is very important. Okay, so do you see uh, period, uh, period nine here? So period nine is here, and then this is period eight. So where are we right now? Yeah, we are still in period eight, right? Why? Because we know that 2020, 2004 until 2023, we are still in period eight. But the moment it shifts to period nine, it will be 2000, 2024. Yeah, 2024. Okay, so now then, uh, what is this? Yeah, 2017. Because in Chinese metaphysics, yeah, there are two schools. Yeah, they're talking about the transition date. One school they say that a hey, the transition date should happen on 2017. And then another school say that the transition date should happen on 2024. Okay, so there are two dates they argue about this, but actually it's not it's not uh, contradicting because 2017 means that it changed on the event. The word event will start to change that reflects what is period nine is all about. Okay, so the 2024, this one is the earth energy change. Remember just now the cosmic trinity? You guys see, still remember the three, uh, the cosmic trinity? So this 2017 is the heaven part. Heaven represents the world event, economy and all those things. Okay, so the 2024 represents the earth, which is what? Feng Shui. Right, so the, the configuration of the feng shui, if it's working right now in period nine, it might not be working. All right, so are you guys clear? Yeah, because when you are when you actually uh, research about period nine, you might came across people referring to two years here. So if you're talking about 2017, it's more about world event, and 2024 is about feng shui. If you are practicing feng shui, you want to make changes in your house, then the period nine only begins on 2024 because this is the uh, later heaven or the earth. Uh, so on top is the early heaven. So now the next one I want to share with you here is this one, right? Because if you want to know, hey, okay, why is so, uh, why is the important thing in period nine? Then we can look at these uh, three lines here. These three lines here talking about uh, one thing. Yeah, it's talking about uh, the image and this one apparently is a female, right? It's a female gua. So I think if uh, the summary here in period nine, the uh the woman will be the powerhouse in period nine yeah this uh, i mean in a very generic analysis they will hold a, a very important uh, position in the uh, in the company or even in the government in the leadership position yeah they are the upcoming king or leader yeah so uh, upcoming queen or leader all right yeah so this one is the thing here so if you are interested in feng shui which one you should pay more attention to 2017 or 2024? 2020, yes, you're right, 2024, right? So if you're interested to predict 
what is the event, what is happening, what is the economy, what business are working, what business is not, you know, or what kind of job is in demand in period nine, then where we should look at? 2017, all right? So, and you notice that starting 2017, a lot of events happening, right? So, if you look at the world, right, that is where the Me Too movement uh, is, uh, is started. Do you still remember the Me Too movement? Where they do the hashtag? Where the female that better the, the harassment at work? Yeah, that is 2017, right? Now you see the rise of women, right? It's during those years. And then, but a lot of people, they cannot accept the differences between 2017 and 2024. All of you here can, right? No problem for you. Are you guys clear? Between the differences between 2017 and 2024? Yes. But a lot of people don't want to accept that fact. They say it's too confusing. Okay? So very simple. If it's very confusing, you just do like this. 2017 at 2024 divide by two. Fine. <laughs> right. Yes. Uh, this one will solve all this confusion, right? Since there are two transition date, why not you use the 2017 and then you add 2024 and then you divide by two? Yeah, then that's it. So this gives us when you add these two dates together and then you divide by two, we give you around 2020 in the mid-year of 2020. That is the transition point. So tell me, in 2020, the mid of 2020, what is happening? Yeah, that's when the pandemic started, right? Yeah, so yeah, somehow, yeah, this part here is uh, in whether we see the shift. Yeah, this is not about just theory, right? So we're talking about period nine is a real thing, right? We see the world changing and all those things. So the, the question here is, are we able to actually uh, take advantage of this change or not? So if you ask about uh, what kind of uh, thing that the period nine will affect us, yeah, this one would be, uh, uh, let me show you the, the thing here first, right? Period nine. Yeah, so this is the one. It will change the way uh, your partner interact with period nine. Yeah, if you see on the screen right now. So therefore we call this uh, the default destiny. Yeah, default destiny is your partner. Because I, I've been told that some of you don't like your partner, right? Okay, so maybe period nine, you know, yeah, there'll be some, uh, the, you can tap into additional energy there. So the second one in parts, uh, in uh, period nine, you will also change the way uh, you are uh, for your career development, right? Because certain uh, job will be, uh, be obsolete and then some of the job will be, uh, uh, will be uh, in demand, right? We need to know this. And then also there'll be also the, of course, yeah, since the economy is changing, it will affect the way the business is doing. And also here, also investment, right? Do you realize, do you want to succeed in uh, investment in period nine? You know? Of course, right? 20 years, you know, right? So we need to know how about feng shui? Of course, because the feng shui, how important it is to affect us. If we know what to change, then yeah, we can thrive in period nine. Yeah, you'll be happy camper. So how about well-being and fulfillment? Of course, right? About health and how about relationship? Yeah, and how about luck and opportunities? So whenever we mention about period nine, so these are the main uh, primary aspect that the period nine will affect us. So today, today we're going to talk about primarily on this one, Feng Shui part. I don't have time to talk about everything. Yeah, this one takes a lot of time. So today I'm going to talk more on the Feng Shui part. Yeah, as why I got chose to talk about the Feng Shui part? Yeah, because the webinar title says so. Okay, yeah, that's the only reason. Yeah, do you realize you, you sign up for this webinar, it say uh, Feng Shui secrets for period nine, right? Okay, so no choice, right? We need to do the Feng Shui part. Okay, so now, uh, how do we begin on this? So today I'm, I'm prepared uh, something uh, for you today. And the first one, uh, first one we're going to talk about today is, uh, is about, let me just uh, see whether I can, Okay, today I'm going to talk about the first thing about the Feng Shui secret. Uh, let me show you about all the, the three things, right? maybe more, but I'm going to share with, uh, share with you these are the three things I'm going to talk about today. All right, the Feng Shui secrets in period nine. The first one is don't do that. Okay, the second one is the direction of the dragon. And then the third one here is the trade secrets today, or maybe more. I don't know yet, right? Depends on your learning appetite. Do you want to learn more? You want bonus? Okay. All right. So, 
maybe more. Yeah, but let's stick with this three first, right? Even maybe this three also might go over time, but I'll do my best. Okay, the first one here, uh, if you notice here, the, the first secrets of uh, in period nine is something got to do with, uh, the, the word here is don't do that, right? So what does it mean? Don't do that. It's because it's like this. The moment people hear about period nine, the first thing they think is what? They want to upgrade their house to period nine. How many of you here think like that? Right? You feel that if your house is in period eight, you know, it's like it seems like it will expire. Yeah, all the bricks will fall down, you know, suddenly the piping is not working. <laughs> yeah, and then they get freaked out, right? Oh my god, you know, period nine is coming. What are you gonna do with my house? Right? So now, therefore, the first secrets here is don't do that first. Right? It doesn't mean yeah, period nine house is always better in period nine. Okay, what do you mean period nine house? Period nine house means that uh, every, anytime you move into a new house uh, starting 2024 and beyond, that one is a period nine house. Any house that's staying right now could be just period eight, right? It's not necessarily better, right? If you just change your house for the sake of it's a period nine, maybe you get a, 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 a worse feng shui house. Okay, yeah, so don't think that period eight house is always bad in period nine. Yeah, therefore, I put the secrets here is what? Don't do that. Don't think like that first. Yeah, I don't want you to buy everything. Oh, I was not I bought a period nine house and what to do. Then only you discover that is even worse than your period eight. Your period, house, period eight house is good. Okay, I think, uh, so let me give you an example here like Warren Buffett, right? So Warren Buffett, he stayed on his house since how, uh, since when? so many years, right? Yeah, so it's still saying the same house. That house could be just period seven house, very old house. And how is he doing in his business? Yeah, you wouldn't make more and more money, right? So I don't want to think that, okay, period seven house means that it's a bad house, right? So it's not, right? So he stayed at that house, that house got good feng shui, right? So I don't want to use the number as if like it's a operate, operating system upgrade. Okay, yeah, this is yeah, this is the thing. Yeah, it's not like you're doing iOS upgrade, you know, always number nine is better. So now this is the first thing. Stop yourself from do that first. Okay, first lesson here. So now even your period eight, you can make your house period eight compliant without the need to change to period nine house. You guys uh, understand what I'm talking about? Okay, all right, so now. Once, once you know this, uh, then I'm going to actually uh, talk about the second part. I need you to accept first. Yeah, no need to change your house. Later on, later discover maybe your house, uh, when you know how to select the house, then maybe there's a chance you can shift your house. But most of the time, 90% of the house, you no need to shift. Uh, you no need to shift to a new house, right? It's still okay. It's still very good. Yeah, so some of you learned feng shui before. Do you know that a lot of uh, configuration, how many of you here learned Flying Star before? Yeah, you learned Flying Star, type the word me. Okay, so now I'm just talking to this group of people, all right? So if you don't know, don't worry. Yeah, you're not left out. I'm just telling you something, right? In period nine house, yeah, there are no uh, prosperous facing, pros uh, prosperous uh, uh, backing. There are no such configuration in period nine. In period eight, you got those house. Prosperous facing and then pros uh, prosperous uh, backing. Yeah. So, and in period nine house, you don't have up the mountain, down the river in Flying Star. Don't, th those chart doesn't exist. It only exists in period eight. Okay. Yeah. So now, yeah, is it period nine house always better? No. Okay. Yeah. Period nine house doesn't have a uh, facing combo then. Yeah, so there's a lot. So therefore, period eight and period nine house, the nature is very different, right? So don't just change for the sake of changing, okay? Period nine house, they only have double facing and uh, double uh, uh, double sitting. Yeah, they don't have front and back. So different, different application, all right? Okay, cool. Yeah, so I want to tell this, so I don't want you to be so impulsive because I've been told that someone already planned to do all these things. I would say, hold your horses first. That's the first one. All right. 
So uh, Lily M asks, there's no combo then in period nine. There will be, but it's a sitting combo. There's no facing combo. Okay, all right. So, so that one, I leave it to you. Yeah, you 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 do some research on that, but I'm gonna tell you here is uh, some house you cannot get in period nine. That is so good in period eight, you cannot get in period nine. So therefore, don't change first until you know all the details. All right, okay, now the second one, the second one, uh, let me show you again here. The second one I'm going to talk about uh, now is this, the direction of the dragon. Right, the second one here, the direction of the dragon. The name seems like so cool, right? Is it like a movie or something? Yeah, so this dragon here, basically what I'm, I'm trying to tell you here, this dragon here is a, um, is a, is a energy, right? They use a metaphor to represent a uh, mountain. Yeah, this is what the dragon is. So because the first rule of feng shui, some, some of you learned feng shui before, right? The first rules of feng shui is the house must able to receive energy. Okay, this is very important. Okay, so it doesn't matter how whatever feng shui formula you apply. Yeah, in Cantonese, there's, there's a saying, sao mu, sao he, right? Can you receive the energy or not? If you cannot receive the energy, I don't care what feng shui configuration you have. Yeah, so it's a bad feng shui. Okay, so I want to imagine that this uh, uh, good feng shui uh, is how it is must able to receive energy. So I want to think this energy is like a food, right? Nutrition. So if your body, right, I don't care how beautiful your body is right now. Yeah, but if you're constantly eating poisonous food or unhealthy foods in the long run, right, what will happen to you? Of course, you, you fall sick, right? So therefore, the house also the same. The house must receiving good energy first, like a good nutritious uh, food. Yeah, that's the whole concept here, right? So then how do you receive this good energy, right? So apparently the energy in feng shui study is come from the mountain, right? So they use the word dragon because dragon, the mountain range as if like, it symbolized like a dragon moving. So they use the word dragon to represent the mountain. It's more cooler to say something like dragon, right? Look, you look, make you look like more mysterious, <laughs> like your master. But basically, whenever someone referring dragon in feng shui, it's actually referring to the mountains, okay, or hills or higher ground, okay. So now, since the energy coming through from the mountain, so which means that if you want to know your house can receive, I mean, high quality energy, there must be a mountain or hill on that vicinity. Yeah, this is this is the rules here in Feng Shui. Right? Someone's, I, I saw some of your comment uh, say that, hey, Singapore don't have mountain, but you have hill, right? Hill also considered. Okay, all right. So now, since the, that's, do you realize that, you know, all the rich neighborhood, they like to stay in the hilly area. They like to, uh, somehow they want to build around the hilly area. This one, uh, uh, I mean, applied to, uh, every places in the whole world. In Hong Kong, there's a hill, right? Yeah, in Singapore, everything is a hilly area. In Malaysia, also the same, like Kenny Hill and all those things, right? Why? Because the energy there is, uh, the quality is good. Yeah, Italy also the same, right? Yeah, Thomas Wong say, yeah, it's actually, uh, you, you try to do some research. All the rich neighborhood, I would say 95% of them, there'll be certain, somehow all the rich people, I don't know why, they like to stay in the hill. Okay, if some are that, those energy compatible with them. So now, this energy is uh, good, right? But this mountain, can, if you see a mountain in, uh, in your house or within your house, not in your house, what I'm talking about, within your house surrounding, right? The mountain or the dragon can come to you in different direction, right? can come to you in different direction, right? It could be from the Southwest. It could be from the Southeast, right? There are so many different direction the mountain could be. So in period nine, you need to actually look at one diagram here, one formula to qualify, yeah, where is the right position of this mountain should be. So then we need to look at this chart here called the Loshu, Loshu chart, all right? So let me show you here. Yeah, this is the Loshu chart I'm talking about here. So tell me, right, in this chart here, yeah, this is a feng shui formula chart. So where is number, where do you think is the most powerful boxes here? Yeah, pick a guess. 
Okay. Yeah. So is what? Which is the one? Nine. Okay. Some you say eight, right? So in period nine, which one do you think is the is a powerful one? <laughs> nine, right? So nine. So if you want to receive the optimum energy from the mountain, because that's where the energy are being produced. So would you like to see the mountain coming from which part of it? South. Okay. All right. So this is the one thing you need to look at um, in period nine, yeah? whether the house can receive a good chi or not. Has to be come from the south. So let me uh, let me show you. Uh, I draw something is easier for you to understand this. Okay. All right. So let me just. Let's say. Okay. Let's say this is your house looking from the top, looking down, and then you, you go at the center here, and then you take, you take out your compass, and then here is pointing north. The needle always point to north, right? If you take your compass, tell me where is south then? Opposite, All right? So south is the opposite. So if you see a mountain here, so is this a powerful mountain or dragon? Because opposite always the south, right? Opposite of north, yes. So is your house receiving period nine energy or not? Yes. Okay, easy. So did I mention the house facing? I didn't. So I don't even care where is the house facing. Yeah, the house can face here, right? Doesn't matter. Yeah, it can face in the east area. I don't care. All I care is as long from the house center looking from the south, do I see mountain or not? Yeah, based on the chart, mountain in the south is super powerful in period nine. So when you have this, means what? You are you able to receive good chi. So great vitamins for the whole house, high quality. Okay, yeah, this is the one that uh, they are talking about. So. Uh, late question later. Some of you ask about building. Yeah, building is not included. I'm talking about real mountain. Yeah, real mountain is the only way to produce the chi. Uh, the building cannot do that for you. Okay. So now, once you have this piece of information, uh, what I need you to do here is uh, just based on this alone, can you able to actually, if you want to buy a house or you want to rent a house, is it easy for you to qualify something like this? right easy right so it's on the south you see mountain for 20 years you're able to receive nutrition good it could be vitamin a b c d everything okay so now in uh in period nine you say okay what is so uh, what is the benefit of this because in the south sector also represent if you see a mountain there it represent well-being yeah health health i mean uh, you, you have a better health and then also you might have this uh you are because fire element represent happiness so all the residents that stay in this area with the south there's a mountain they're able to tap to this energy of happiness and uh a well-being do you think it's cool right later you ask questions some of you ask about where is the whether the land is flat or not everything that one we put it aside first right so maybe you need to concentrate here first so you can learn something first Right. If you keep typing question there, it's not that I don't want to answer. If I answer now, then you get deviated to somewhere else, right? So I think I better just talking to you first. Later on, I'm going to address your question. Are you guys okay? Okay. Now, so someone asked also say, hey, is it matter that I own the house or not? What if I rent? Will the feng shui still affects me? Okay. Let, let me ask you back. Right. So if you rent a house. Let's say the house got good feng shui. Will you still able to benefit from the good feng shui? Yes or no? Of course. <laughs> because the energy doesn't know whether you're owner of the house or not. As long as you are there, you get benefit from, from the energy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, the chi doesn't have that superpower. You know, they go and check, you know, okay, this ground is belong to who? Okay. Since you're not this house is not under your name, then I decided not to give you the chi. <laughs> it doesn't happen that way. Okay, now let me ask you another question here. Let's say you own, you, you bought a house for investment. You didn't stay there. You rent it out for someone else, but it's a good feng shui house. 
were you able to benefit from the house or not? The house is owned by you. Okay, no, right? Uh, now you, I think you get the point already. Okay, nice. Oh, some of you still say yes. <laughs> okay, no. If you don't stay there, then you're not able to benefit from it, right? Who will benefit from it? Your tenant. Because you're the landlord, right? You're not staying there. Yeah, then your tenant will benefit from it. Is it bad? No. Because if you can benefit the tenant, means that he have money to pay you every month, right? Now. Still good. Right? <laughs> yeah, so because i heard someone say that hey if i rent to people i don't need to buy a good feng shui house for renting but it's i don't i don't agree right because if you buy a house you rent a house that is bad feng shui and then you affected your tenant and then they cannot pay the rent right because maybe they're out of job you know or, or they do something stupid right so therefore good feng shui equal uh prompt payment <laughs> rental payment okay new code just created okay you might need to write this down okay now, okay, so now you guys understand this? Yeah, this is a very simple concept, but it's uh, very important because 90, 70 percent or more of the feng shui actually comes from external, right? The mountains, the surrounding, not what you do inside. Yeah, what you do inside is just a very minor thing, right? It's just a cosmetic uh, adjustment. Yeah, but the real, because it's what you eat, right? So what you eat from outside, the, new, the food is very important. Yeah? What is inside, whether you, if you eat poisonous food, let's say, but you do exercise every single day, will you really help? Maybe a little bit, right? But you're still eating unhealthy foods. Right? I think you, uh, if you actually, you're in a fitness uh, group here, you know that you know 80% is from the kitchen, right? And then 20% from the workout, right? So therefore, internally, you say, I want to adjust my chair and everything, right? That one, the most you can achieve, maybe 20% of the feng shui. Right, so 80% of outside because what you take in is the most important. So now, would are you equipped with one of the secrets of selecting a new house if you were going to buy from now onwards? Yes, right, so pay attention to where, go to the south and then see it. Okay, now, let me show you again. Let me go through some details here for you. So if you, let's look back to this diagram again. Right, what is benefit? So in this house here, would you buy this house or not? Of course, right? Because this house here got some good features, right? So we say, so you're able to, uh, and what is the other benefit? Because uh, South Sector also represent our uh, uh, beauty. So therefore, the people stay in this house, normally they are quite good looking. Do you like this or not? <laughs> right? Yeah, who doesn't, right? Yeah, so because the, which means they are very vain. Yes, yeah, so maybe all this while they doesn't really care about their appearance. The moment the moment they stay in this house, maybe after a few months, they start to take care of themselves, how they look. They're very uh, uh, they're very conscious about how they look. Even a, a a male, maybe they also wear mascara. You know, probably you know, <laughs> so something something like this. Yeah, so it's about beauty. So is it good for beauty business? Yes. Yeah, if you're running your own beauty business. Right, so is it good? How about uh, fire elements? South is fire also represent technology. So in period nine, by the way, yeah, tech is one of the big thing in period nine. Okay, so if if some of you are thinking, right, what to do in period nine, you don't know what to do, yeah, uh, educate yourself with technology knowledge. Yeah, it will be good for you. So the feng shui also supporting it is from the south. And the south also represent metaphysics also represents spirituality. So in period nine, yeah, metaphysics and spirituality also is a very big thing. So if you have a house like this, that's supporting also metaphysic industry, so don't you think it'd be cool? So now you're not only doing action that related to period nine, you also have a house that's supporting your goal here. Now you have both sides already of the equation of the cosmic trinity. You have the uh, you have the earth element and then you're also able to benefit from the, the heaven element. Okay. All right. So this is, so now someone asked about facing, right? Doesn't really matter. Yes. So I think you still don't get it, right? Do I actually talking about the facing here, guys? Yeah, the, this house could face anywhere. Let's say the house face here. Facing here. So basically it's facing west. Right? Do I really care? Don't care. It doesn't change the fact the mountain is still in the south, right? 
are you guys clear on this? Because I'm talking to more than 2,000 people here, right? So I need you to be clear. I didn't mention anything about facing. The facing could be anywhere. Now, as long as the mountain looking out from the south direction as a mountain is complied. Okay, now, what if you see a mountain here? Let's say you, you, you are, let me draw again. You see a mountain from the south, but your house is missing south sector. Would you still able to tap to the energy? Okay, no good. All right, yes, you're right, no good. Why? Because, yes, you still eat the, uh, <laughs> the nutritious meal, but there are no stomach, there are no digestion. You become in digestion problems. So you cannot benefit from the energy. Your digestion is not working because there are no uh, connection on the, on the south area, because you know this is a south area, right? It's missing. So another guideline for you, if you uh, looking for a house that has missing south sector, don't buy. Don't buy. Okay, clear? Because I don't care whether you have a mountain there, it doesn't matter. Aaron, clear? Right, this is the second one here. So now let's say, let's say this house is not missing. Right, let's say it's not missing. It's a good buy, right? So now, now let me teach you how do you fine tune it even better. Do you want to know how to fine tune it even better? Yeah, in the house, right? So the next part here is like this. Let, let me use one example here. Okay, this house here. This is basically, this is a compass, all right? So let's say I'm doing here. And if you see there's a mountain here, let's say, hold on, let me just, okay, let's say there's a hill here. Is, is this house com, uh, from the south, you see a mountain? Yes, yes, right? Why? Because here indicate it's a south. Okay, it's a south direction. So first point clear. There's a mountain in the, or hill in the south. Good. So is the south sector missing? Is the south sector missing? No, right? So, okay, it's good. Another good thing, right? So no, not missing. So now the third thing you can fine tune it is something like this. You want the, since the south sector is good, so which is here, this is the south sector, right? So you want the south sector forced into an important area in the house. What is the important area? It could be the main door, or it could be your home office, or it could be your bedroom, or your kitchen, if you cook. Uh, so these are the few key important area. All right, or balcony if you live in a, in a high rise. Oh, okay, so there are, let me repeat again. Yeah, main door, balcony home office or bedroom or kitchen okay all right so choose one so let's say this room this let's use this example here what does this south uh, sector falls into based on this uh house plan here bedroom right so if you want to succeed yeah in your career Let's say where what you want to transform this space into a kitchen or a bedroom. Yes, you're right. Office. Cool. That is how feng shui is done. That's it. <laughs> is it simple? Right? Yeah, this is this is how you, people do feng shui, right? Because it's useless, you use it for sleeping, right? So it's bad. Might, might as well you use it for a room, right? Where you can work on something so you become more creative. Okay? Yeah, so it's good. So if you cannot get an uh, office, as long as you force into main door, bedroom, or balcony, it's fine. Right? Now we are talking about fine tuning, right? To make it even personalized to you. Okay, do you want to be even more personalized or not? You want one more level, more personalized? Okay, now, uh, do you see that that is a horse here? So tell me, this formation benefit for who the most? Horse. Anyone that born in the year of horse? 
Okay, clear. Yeah, someone say year only. Yes, you start with year, right? So you do. If you don't have in the year, you can you can match back with the uh, the month, the day, or the hour. But the year get it first. If you're in the month, day, or hour, you get the leftover. But you still get it. It's fine. Better than nothing. Okay, okay. So David say the snake can get a bit R. Okay, it seems like you are negotiating. Okay, all right. Let's see. Yeah, let's see here. So in the south, do you see any snake here? Do you see any snake? No. All right. So where's the snake is? The snake is here. Okay. So if the snake is here, let's say you are the snake. What you should do? Because you're not, you're not, you're not the main benefactors, right? It's very easy. You move to this room. Yeah, just move to this room to stay. Then you get all the benefits. Just move to here. This is called secret techniques. Do whatever it takes. Okay, you tell the rest of your resident this is the worst room to have. So since you are so benevolent, so you sacrifice a little bit, you stay there. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is how you do it. Yeah, but there's much more, right? So now we're talking about the horse, right? So you can use a combination, then you extend to tiger, dog, and goat as well, right? But let's not get into that detail first because there are a lot of beginners here. There's a lot of fun thing to do. What I'm telling you here is just the tip of an iceberg, right? At least you can you have something to work on to first, right? Because you go to buy a, a house, yeah, maybe any any time or any the next few months, right? So at least you have something you can consider before you make a purchase on that decision. Okay, all right, clear. Yeah, some of you ask about how about clashing all those things, but uh, if you are red, don't worry, right? So later on, there's a combination uh, you can work with. Yeah, because the south also related to the southeast. Yeah, that one is detailed, right? So let's not get into that. Otherwise, I would say half of the uh, attendees here who, uh, who is a beginner, they're going to actually uh, puzzle. They don't know what is happening. Can we just stick with here? I think right now it's quite detailed already yeah, to most of you, right? Are you guys okay? Okay, so if you want to be more detailed, of course, uh, you can learn. Yeah, maybe later on we have something uh, for you. But for now, let's let's do uh, something like this. Okay, all right, cool. All right, nice. So now, what we go to actually uh, uh, do now here is uh, is like this. Any now, let's answer some uh, question first. Do you have any question? Okay, if my condo is on top of the hill. If you're on top of the hill means that you know you're not you're sitting on the hill yeah so you're not benefiting right because in order to tap into the chi you need to see it because it's come to you right so if you're on the hill you are the food some you get what i mean you see on top of the food the food is not coming to you so what good is that <laughs> okay all right so someone's still asking about facing right so i I already uh, mentioned a few times. Yeah, let's not talk about facing. Yeah, because it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Someone say if I live in a city, uh, if I don't have don't have heal, then what to do? Then don't use this formula. Or move to a place that got heal. <laughs> Two solutions. Right. Okay. No need to be complicated. All right. Okay, I know some of you, how about virtual hill, you know, building, no, right? You need to be very strict here because we are talking about period energy, all right? Mm, okay, so someone say, how about the mountain is very far, very far, far away, maybe just a little bit. So you just get a dessert, <laughs> very small. You don't get the main cost, all right? Who will get the main cost? The house that nearer to the mountain. <laughs> okay. All right, so yes, this uh, this is how it works. Wow, so many questions here. <laughs> okay, so do you, do you like this a lot? Do you like to learn feng shui and all this stuff here? So uh, before we uh, continue here, if some of you uh, would like to actually, because I believe in momentum, right? So sometimes we go for a webinar and after it's ended, we forget, right? So, and I know that a lot of you already joining me on my Telegram channel. And because some of you are new here in my Telegram channel, I give a lot of free stuff. 
right? Something you can actually uh, use it immediately to help you to improve your life. I think the recent one I up I posted on my Telegram is about using the energy of this month to become younger. How good is that? Anti-aging property, right? Some of you join my Telegram, you know about that, right? Yeah, so uh, this is this one. Yeah, this energy is monthly energy. So you use it while it lasts, right? Until October 7th. So some of you, do you heard, I think a lot of you joining, you're already listening to that, right? So you only have until October 7, right? So don't procrastinate, do it. Okay, so Theodora say you're already using it, nice. Okay, right? So do you want all this information on? Some of you are new here. So let me just uh, share with you, uh, how do you get this uh, uh, information? Right, so now I show you on the screen. Yeah, uh, this is the, uh, you just do a screenshots or you can, uh, you can actually, um, uh, this, uh, there's a QR code, just use your phone to scan it. And then from the Telegram channel, you do, you do that. So, and uh, maybe next, I go to plan more stuff inside the Telegram. I already uh, drafted out the plan. There's a lot of new stuff coming in, some surprise for all of you here, right? So someone say, uh, okay, pay attention to the chat box right now, right? I think the team here also posted the, uh, the link in the chat box right now, you see that, right? Just uh, save it first. Yeah, and then you can join. Once you join it, then you're eligible to all this free stuff there. And again, right now it's still free, but I heard that uh, Telegram channel that might actually uh, charge certain fees yeah, on the channel. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. Yeah, but right now it's still free, right? So the, I think you suggest you to join first and then at least you, you can join for free. Yeah, there are no uh, membership fees right now. Okay, okay, all right, cool. So if you don't have the phone right now, it's, it's okay. You just drop down, uh, you just write down the, the link first or take a photo first of this screen here or you look at the chat box, there's a link, right? Then you can do it later on, okay? There's a lot of information inside. All you need to do because the thing is like this, this Telegram channel, I keep posting stuff, right? Sometimes you need to scroll back to the, uh, the top part to see all the previous messages. Everything is there. Yeah, you're not missing out, okay? All right, so now, um, shall we move on to the third secrets in period nine? So far, are you guys okay? Do you learn something new? Yeah, is this useful for you? Right now, you, suddenly your feng shui level increased. A lot of people talking about south right now, you know yeah, where it is and you now, now you know it's nothing to do with the facing direction. And now you also know you don't need to move to a period nine house to able to benefit from period nine, right? So, and then uh, you also know how to fine tune it based on animal sign, right? So there's so many things. Yeah, furthermore, there's so many techniques here. But now uh, I want to share with you the third part here is about this, uh, the trade secrets. Do you want to learn the trade secrets? Okay, this is uh, this is something that I want to share with you. And I why want to share with you this one because I discovered that uh, in uh, in this field here, uh, there is a lot of feng shui practitioner that not able to actually create uh, I mean success for themselves. Right, I mean it could be financially. You know, they are, they are not able to do it. Yeah. So, and do you know why? Do you know why it's like this? A lot of feng shui practitioner, they are not able to, I think you've seen a lot, right? Yeah, a lot of them, they teach people how to actually uh, become wealthier, but they themselves are struggling, right? Someone say maybe is they don't apply or they don't stand out. I used to think that uh, that way as well, but I once I actually discovered a shocking discovery, yeah, that actually the reason, yeah, the reason they are not able to actually uh, become successful in that field because they know everything. <laughs> that is the reason. Okay, yeah, they know every single formula in Feng Shui. Do you know that there are thousands of formula there? And because in their mind, right, they think that they want to fit all the formulas into the application. Therefore, they are confused. And then sometimes they just give up or they don't even apply at all. Yeah. So the reason here is it's not because they are not capable. It's not. Yeah. All of them, they're very smart. Yeah. But the only thing they are too smart. They know every single thing. Bro, sometimes have you do you agree with me when I say if you are a bit dumber, just a little bit, but actually you get more result than the compared to the most intelligent one? Right? Because they take action, right? 
Yeah, they don't really care. Yeah, they don't lose their sleep because they doesn't comply to certain formulas. So if you look at the how the world works here, you look at all the successful people, right? How they become successful? Are they trying to be good in every single thing? You look at all the successful people. Are they trying to be that or not? No, right? Yeah, they are focused on one thing and then they become so good at it, right? Then what makes you think in feng shui? You need to focus on every single thing. To become effective, no, right? So you only focus on one or two things, yeah. That is the secrets here, right? So let me share with you here, uh, in uh, in feng shui, yeah. Let me show show you this diagram first, yeah. This is a lot of uh, this is already considered a simplified diagram, okay? Yeah, this is a very simplified diagram. Do you see it here? This is a lot of feng shui system, and it actually further branch out to much more. Okay, if this one look very complicated to you, yeah, so I don't think you want to see the, the, the real map here. Okay, this one's just a simplification of the feng shui system, right? And like this, yeah, so another way here, uh, there is much more, right? Flying star, chimen feng shui, shang kong, san he method. So how do you feel after you see all this? <laughs> you feel happy? Right, so the trick here is like this. Yeah, so the reason I call this a trade secret, there are so many feng shui formulas out there, right? So how do we get result? We must know, yeah, what feng shui method will become workable and powerful in period nine. Would you like to know this? Yes, right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to share with you uh, uh some of it. Yeah. So you can get to know if you're interested. You can do some research on that part. All right, so there are only two things, right? So it doesn't feel so overwhelmed anymore. So the one of the feng shui system that uh, will be very powerful in period nine, whenever I mention powerful, which means that you get more results out there, is this one. Have you heard about uh, this system called purple white feng shui? Zi ba kut in Cantonese. All right, so therefore, this is one of the system uh, period nine compliant feng shui system. Yeah, it become more effective. Yeah, because the secret lies in this word, purple. Okay, that's the reason they call purple, right? If you learn uh, uh, flying star feng shui, each number represent by a thing. Okay, I, I got this slide here. Tell me, which one is the purple color star? Number nine, right? Mm, okay, here. So it say that purple white. Yeah, purple white system. It's called purple white, right? So purple, there are only one purple color here. How about white? There are three. One, uh, six, eight. All right, so in period nine, nine is the dominant. So purple white system is one of the system uh, you need to use a lot in period nine. I already using it. Okay, yeah, because I already mentioned, right? The secret is here. It's too obvious. <laughs> People, they might overlook because they are they, they know every single thing. And now you see the, the aha moment here, right? Actually, sometimes I, I, I respect of all these masters, you know, they're actually hidden the code there. It's just like you are, you're in the Da Vinci Code movie, right? You can actually decipher certain hidden codes, you know, and now you know. Yeah, I can easily just do this for, I charge people for it, but I decided not to because I think this information should be available for everyone, right? So, but you need to do your part. You do your research on it. Okay, fair deal. All right, so purple white. Okay, so that is one here. And then the second thing here you can do in period nine, I recommend here, this is so-called like Iverson recommendation, all right? So I cannot speak behalf for everyone. Yeah, so I just say from my, this is my perspective. And the second one here, I will say Shang Kong Dagua. Yeah, this is uh, one of the most easiest to apply feng shui, basically just tweaking the, the desk and everything. And this one also will be a big thing in period nine. Okay, let me tell you why. Remember just now, we're talking about in period nine, there are two transition dates, 2017 and 2024, right? So if you want to apply, feng, the feng shui energy will come when? 2024 or 2017. Yes, 2024, correct, right? So all flying star system, all based on 2024. 
but Shangkum Dagua system based on this. Okay, Shangkum Dagua. So which means that in Shangkum Dagua system, period nine already happened. So they have a advantage of seven years. You can use it now already because Shangkum Dagua formula based on early heaven. It doesn't based on later heaven plate. There's flying star everything, yes, 2024. But Shanghun Dagua is 2017 already started. So don't you think already have advantage of seven years ahead? Then why you don't do this? Right? Is it obvious here? So this is what I do in my uh in my I, I moved to a new house uh in 2020 uh 2018, right? And then this house here I use two systems the most. I use uh uh the what we call the Shangung Dagua alignment for my kitchen and everything because it's really period nine, right? And then guess what? When I buy this house, which mountain I pay attention to? Okay, the south, right? So I need to ensure that the south got the mountain. Yes, you're right. Wow, you all, all of you here are great in Feng Shui. Okay, and I am because when you buy a house, you can do more, right? So let me share. Do you want to know what I do in my house? You want to know? Okay, all right. So I share with you. I hope that it doesn't uh, get you confused. I try to uh, cut out all the technical part here. And then I also want a mountain from the west area in my house. And in my west area, there's a door op window opening. And from there, I see a mountain. I need that. Why? Because the west govern our speaking ability. So if you are speaker, you are trainer, you are advisor, right that give you extra advantage that one is for me right because i'm a, i i what my job nature is about talking advising right so another party beside the south mountain for long term for period nine i also get to tap to this yeah, so that's the one for me and then one more thing in the northwest area yeah northwest area northwest area is my nobleman sector I also make sure there is a mountain there. That one is for me because everyone here is different, right? Your nobleman will be different. So I also do that as well. Okay, three adjustment. Yeah, that one is based on Batsa, right? Tony Tan, is it based on Batsa? Yes, it is. Right? So Northwest is the peak. If you're Yang Fire, then also the same, right? The peak direction. So now, the fourth thing I do here in my home office, where, where I am right now in the home office, I use purple white feng shui to position to set up the structure. So guess what? What kind of structure I want to set up in my, in my house home, uh, home office? I'm using purple white. I want to foster what? creativity and also able to ensure that the content that I develop, that I teach is easy to understand, even to layman people. That is the setup. So, and if you follow me on my, uh, it could be Telegram or YouTube or my work, right? you realize that this year, especially, did I do a lot of courses, right? We do the eye of the future and then we do awaken your entrepreneur destiny, right? So all this content, do you like those contents? Some of you that already attended this, uh, you like, okay, thank you. Thank you for that. And all of these are brewing inside my home office. That's where I do my thinking, my creativity. Yeah, you really think I'm so talented. I'm not one, you know, I'm using feng shui to support me. Okay, now you might think, hey, Alison, do you created this all yourself? I don't want to take the credit for that because I'm using feng shui to do it. Okay, it's not me. All right, yeah, I just I just participate on it. So if, therefore, that is what I do for my feng shui, only four things. Yeah, is it simple? Once I explain, it's no longer mystery, right? Yeah, if it's not, you might think, hey, Alison must have a lot of secret technique, don't want to reveal in feng shui. No, only these four things I do. The rest, do I care? No, because in life it's like this, right? You only need to take care on the important part, right? The little of the part, yeah, don't bother over all these little thing, right? As long as the main structure is being taken care of, okay? Yeah, so that's that's it, right? And then relax. Yeah, I don't want to be control, so many constraints in the house. This one cannot use, that one cannot use. It's not like that, right? Don't, th don't you think it's the same thing apply for your health as well? If your health fundamentally is good, right? It's okay to eat junk food once in a while and enjoy life. Make sense to you? Right. Yeah, you must enjoy life. You don't say, oh, this one you don't use. It has to be a perfect house. It's not possible. When you have a perfect house, you don't have fun. 
<laughs> everything you also cannot do. Right? You touch a little bit here, touch your mouse, oh, activate something, right? Then suddenly you drink a glass of water and then you activate another stuff. So dangerous, like walking on a cracking glass, right? So we don't want that. Yeah, that is how I apply feng shui. Okay, I hope you learned something uh, uh, based on my sharing here. Okay, so, and um, do, you, uh, do you enjoy this session so far? Okay, can I give you one bonus information since you, what, since you make me happy? When you say yes, you already make me happy, okay? I have no choice. I want to share with you one more piece of information if you allow me to. <laughs> okay, yeah, so now you know, right? What made Iverson happy? The word yes. <laughs> okay, so now, remember just now, uh, uh, let's, let me bring back this uh, diagram here. In just now, I, I focus a lot in feng shui, right? Yeah, on this part, I focus a lot of feng shui. So you also know that, you know, um, in the period nine, default destiny, your parts also, uh, the interaction also will be changed as well. All right, the everything here, right? So I want to, the bonus information here is something about the parts, right? Because some of you say, hey, whether my parts is uh, a good in period nine or not, you know, whether it's comply or not. Right, so there are two ways to do this. One way you need to check your chart whether it's comply or not. And there are only two possible answers, right? So either is yes or no, right? So the, if it's no, you must also know what to do about it. Make sense? Right, it's not, it, just getting yes or no answer is not good enough, right? Regardless whether yes or no, you must also have a solution on what to do on it, about it. Correct now, agree? Right, so therefore in the notes, I actually compile all this Titan in period nine. There are lists of it, there are the, like the butter that's like a titan. So can I share one with you? One with you here? Okay. All right. So uh, let me uh, let me do this. Okay. So I, I hope you guys okay. If you don't have it, don't worry. This is only the first one only. All right. So let me show you. Okay. This is the one. The first titan in period nine is yin metal. So how many of you here, your day master is yin metal? Type the word me. Okay, all right. So by this information alone, if you have yin matter as your day master in your parcel chart, you will see a lot of opportunities in period nine. And then you also are, you see a lot of Doberman as well that come to help you, powerful one. Yeah, this one is a powerful one. Eh? Uh, Doberman, you see more and more of this. Okay, do you like this? I know if you are sim, you are not seen metal, then of course you are not going to be happy, right? How can you? <laughs> right? Yeah, those things, don't, don't worry. So if there's any constellation, yeah, this is not the only Titan in period nine. Okay, that's one. At least there are more. You can hope they are they are around. There are total of nine. And then, um, if let's say you say you cannot wait, I must know something right now. Your chart beside your day master, do you see any in seen metal in the chart? Okay, all right. Yeah, that one you also can consider. Okay, all right. Yeah, so at least you have some. That the meaning could be a bit different, but yet you still have it. So you're partly comply to period nine on the first rule of this uh, period nine Titan. Okay, feel ha happier now? <laughs> okay, all right. So now, uh, let me ask you one question here, right? So if you allow me, uh, if... So do you like to actually uh, know more about this uh, period nine? How does it affect you and what you can do about it? Not only on feng shui, but also in parts, right? I discovered that a lot of people like parts, right? But you cannot just ignore feng shui because feng shui does play a part in our destiny, right? So we cannot ignore that. So if you are interested on this, so I want to share with you one part, right? So I, but first of all, I want to know, are you serious about making a move to improve your life or not? Right, this is your own personal question. I cannot make this for you, right? So there, there must be a point. You need to decide on this. But if you think, right, this period nine is coming, you want to benefit from it, not only for you and for and also for your family. I, I would like to suggest you to actually uh, uh, consider this about a reset and restart, because every period changes. There's an opportunities for you to reset and restart your game, right? Because it's sort of like level the playing field. Think about this, in 
pandemic, do you realize that a lot of big companies closed down? Right? So therefore, before the pandemic, maybe it's finding hard to compete with the big guys. But right now, all this transition here is sort of like, you know, level the playing field. So the barrier to entry the market is become lower right now. So it's easier. Do you see that? So are you the one taking those opportunities or maybe someone else? Right. So I need you to think about this. So if you're interested to master and, and, and knowing what you can do and thrive in period nine. Yeah, so uh, this is the one I would like to share with you, right? This is a program I'm going to actually uh, teach in uh, November, 27 and 28 of November. So, and uh, this is good. I'm going to conduct this via online. All right, it's via online. So everyone here uh, can benefit from it. Okay, I, so from the chat box, I see that a lot of you here say already joining, already joined, thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for the support. Yeah, but uh, because uh, why? Because actually, originally we already closed the registration. Yeah, but we managed to actually uh, uh, increase the capacity of our Zoom, so we are able to offer uh, open up again for enrollment. Right. So, how many of you here uh, would like to uh, actually uh, learn this from me? Right. This is a two days uh, program from online from twenty one and twenty eight. Okay. So if you're interested on this, this is a period nine masterclass. And what I'm going to uh, uh, do here is the first thing in here is to get yourself protected first. Yeah, don't talk about achieving something. So are you protected in period nine, right? This transition from period eight to period nine, are you protected, right? So kind of like a vaccine, right? So you want to actually uh, do from here. So I actually reinvent this program. So to offer you a lot of uh, new contents here. Okay, so now what I'm going to talk about in this period nine masterclass, I'm going to talk about butter activation for period nine. Do you like this or not? Right, because just now we talk about your Titan, right? So which one you're comply, you need to know, right? What you can do about it. Some are special structure. Okay, so now the next one I'm going to talk about also the nine uh, big transformation in your career and business and what you can do about it. Okay. And the, this is very important. And then the third one, that, yes, this one is about feng shui, right? So we only we are going to focus on two part for your own stay and also for investment. Is it cool, right? Because sometimes you're not going to buy a house for your own, right? You want to invest. So this one is uh, something you want to do here. And also we're going to talk about about romance and relationship in period nine. Yeah, this is due to popular requests because a lot of people asking, "Hi, Alison, why you didn't talk about relationship?" You know, so due to uh, <laughs> a popular request, then I include this inside, right? So I'm going to do this because the, the recent relationship webinar I did, it seems like a lot of people uh, like to hear about it. So therefore, this is here, inside here. And then this is very important. The sp seven spiritual laws of success and happiness in period nine, right? Don't you think, right? No matter what you, uh, what you get, you know, in your life, if you are not happy, you are not spiritually fulfilled, it's nothing, right? So these are the five things I think is important yeah, to get you to uh, to thrive in period nine, okay? So, and I saw so many of you already registered. Thank you for that, right? So I'm in Feng Shui. I also want to focus on Purple White because someone asked, right? How, how to use the Purple White? I'm going to actually add this part in. Yeah, because last year I shared about period nine. I didn't talk about Purple White, but I know that this is important to especially in the new world. So we're going to uh, do this part here in. And also, you also, uh, I would like to share with you, there are also a new challenger in period nine. Okay. Yeah, just now we're talking about women is the, is the leader in period nine, right? But it, it's not so easy, right? They're always uh, yin and yang, right? So you want to know, are you the new challenger in period nine or not? So this one will be uh, something very interesting. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use Pazze, Yi Jing, Feng Shui, and Chimen Dunjia to uh, to tell you how do you maximize on period nine. So we're going to use uh, this four system. And again, right? someone might ask, hey, and I'm a beginner here. We are able to actually uh, understand yeah, what is uh, being taught in this class here. Don't worry, right? This class here is about practical, right? So a technical class is about getting results, right? So if you're someone, uh, you're focused on getting results, then this is the perfect program for you. Okay, now 
let let me share with you what is the investment uh, price for this uh, because we have a lot of contents here. We do a lot of research. So yeah, for the live class fees here is uh, 997 for investment. And if there is a, uh, but now you do this online, right? So we no need to rent the hall and everything. And then you also save your cost, no need to fly to our country to do it because you can learn this right at the comfort of your own home. So this is the uh, arrangement for you. Your, you to enroll for this is only 297, right? So you basically you are saving like uh, 700 US dollar for today, yeah, if you want to. So how many of you here would like to uh, sign up for this and grab these opportunities? All right, okay, nice. So now, yeah, to, to, to appreciate uh, your, your support on this. So I'm uh, the team here going to open, right? This is the link here going to open for one thing here is we're going to open for another 20 slots yeah that if you actually enroll today for the first 20 and then you're going to get this additional uh, webinar how do you neutralize bad luck with shimon okay all right yeah so this one is a bonus deal like this yeah because a lot of people say they don't have luck and all those things right so why not you use shimon to help you yeah this is a vip access right so if you're part of this you're going to get this for free okay if you already enroll previously you're going to get this anyway don't worry all right you're going to get this no question asked you're going to get that all right nice so now if you're interested uh this is the time to do this you know there's a link there or you can pay attention to the chat box there's also a link uh in there and then uh, you can scan the qr code and then you can get the period nine master class and then with the limited bonus as well okay all right so now some of users now you say that you can if you cannot make uh to the uh, uh the dates to of the to of this event then you can actually we have a replay for you so there'll be have another 30 days access to watch the replay as many times that you wanted all right so don't worry there'll be a limited replay for this okay so now and uh some uh, so this uh, how i'm going to do this here is uh I'm going to actually have the closest, I'm going to give you the closest period nine experience ever, right? So, so we can actually learn this is very unique way of teaching. Yeah, so this is how I go to plan for this. And think about this, right? This is a 20 years. Yeah, 20 years, a lot of things can happen, right? So a lot of time, yeah, I think in a way that all of us here are lucky enough to witness this transition to the next period. Because let's say right now you are nine years old. Is this transition very useful for you? If you're nine years old, you still study? No, right? So, or if you're too old, let's say right now you're 90 years old, this one also might not be relevant to you because that time you're, you just enjoy life, right? So, but it's very rare that we in a point in our age, we still able to actually make decision to do something about it, okay? All right, so this would be the uh, uh, time to think about, uh, to, to enroll this because if you miss this, you need to wait for another 20 years for period one. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, if you are thinking this is the time, yeah, it's your time to create breakthrough after everything you learn. Yeah. This would be one of it. Okay. So now there's, there you go, right? There's this link here. And then with the QR code, you join that. And some of you are asking about, I don't have a PayPal account, right? Some of you have these problems, right? I saw in the, in the, in the uh, chat box right now, if you, if you don't have a PayPal account, you just click the PayPal button first because after the third page you have the credit card options yeah i don't know why they designed the page that way because a lot of, uh, i receive a lot of uh messages as well yeah people talking about this so all you need to do here is you just uh you just click the paypal button first and then lead on the third or second page the op credit card options will appear <laughs> that's how it works i don't know why okay so yeah you need to check uh, this is how the payment page being uh, designed all right okay all right so do you enjoy today's uh, session yeah do you like do you like today's session okay i hope you enjoy this yeah the team actually do a lot of uh, preparation for today's event yeah and then we also need to think about you know some of you are new here right so how do we make sure both sides also understand this and get a benefit and i would like to also thank you all of you here for attending this event yeah this two hours event here and I hope you all of you here are healthy, you know, and then uh, 
uh, have some plan for your future. This is very important. And till then, I hope to see you guys again, you know, some uh, day in the future. Yeah, hopefully very soon. Okay, so till then, keep in touch. Bye-bye.